Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015.5 Volvo XC60. This is a four-door SUV with seating for five and this particular trim is the T6 all-wheel drive. Proximity sensors in the front and the rear for assistance while parking. The XC60 also features adaptive cruise control which uses an array of cameras, lasers, and radar to detect the road and vehicles ahead. This also features a power rear liftgate. The rear seats can fold down to give you plenty of additional cargo space uh, and everything is pretty much flush so just an even surface across the entire way which is pretty nice. There's a handle to access the spare tire and this little latch to hold it up while you're working under there. And then underneath you've got your tools and everything. To close the lift gate there's a button up top. Well equipped and with plenty of options, this vehicle's MSRP as tested comes to $51,675. So let's take a look under the hood. Gas shocks to support it. So this is the T6 engine, a turbocharged inline six cylinder. Uh, as is the case nowadays, pretty much covered up, but this engine cover is fairly easy to remove. You can simply pull that off. Now the engine is fairly well tucked in, but your major service points, you've got your coolant fill, power steering fluid, your oil fill, and this is just a simple half turn cap, so that's pretty convenient. You've got your engine dipstick up front, and then your windshield washer fluid to the right. The battery is tucked back towards the driver's side of the engine bay, and at first I was thinking, oh no, they did the same thing that Ford did and covered it up with paneling, but this is actually removable. There's one screw right here, and then you can pop this plastic piece off and get access to the battery. So this is a three liter, six cylinder inline engine, turbocharged, it actually has a twin scroll turbocharger, and it's capable of producing 300 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 325 pound-feet of torque at 2,100 RPM. So because of that uh, advanced turbocharger, you're getting that peak torque very early on, just 2,100 RPM. This engine has an aluminum block and heads, and what we've got going on right here is actually the cam timing. So it has continuously variable valve timing. And what that means is it can change the valve timing at any RPM. So what it'll do is it'll actually alter the cam profile and where, when it opens up the intake valves versus when it opens up the exhaust valves. And it can change that at any point in the rev range. Now one of the interesting things about the engine is this engine mount. Uh, you can see these two cast pieces on a pretty unique and innovative design they've got going on. So they've got this one casting here and then this is on a uh, pivoting arm here with this first bushing. And so what this is preventing uh, is the torsional movement and the lateral back and forth movement of the engine. And then all of this is sitting on top of another isolator underneath that. So it's basically isolated in two different directions here. So what I'm going to do is start the engine and then show some slow-mo footage of this isolator right here. And pay attention to this control arm here, how it doesn't move at all. And all the movement is basically just within this isolator. So let's follow the path of the intake air. So here we have our intake air filter. That's got some tubing that routes up to the front of the vehicle where it's going to be pulling in the air. Then it's going to send that air back behind through this kind of flattened tubing back behind the engine where it's going to feed into the intake side of the twin scroll turbocharger. After passing through the turbocharger, the air is then routed to the front of the vehicle where it'll pass through the intercooler, first traveling through this black hose you see below in the center. So here you can see the intercooler where the air then passes through to cool down. The air is then routed up to the front of the engine where it passes through the electronically controlled throttle body. From the throttle body into the plastic composite intake manifold, which is what everyone seems to be going towards. Uh, then into the intake side of the engine. The air then exits the exhaust where it's split into two pipes and then joins up into a single pipe that goes to the rear. That single pipe enters a single large muffler at the rear of the vehicle, which is then split into two tailpipes. Power is sent to all four corners through these optional 20-inch wheels, which are wrapped in 255 over 45 Pirelli rubber. Large, a little bit over 12 and a half inch front disc brakes, ventilated, and this is matched with the McPherson strut style suspension. Fairly short half shaft you can see here, and this is basically just a result from this being an I6 engine, so the engine is very close to where the drive shaft is coming out to the front two wheels. Pretty simple and clean looking. You've got your steering link here, your anti-roll bar, and then your lower control arm. 
11.5 inch ventilated disc brakes in the rear with a multi-link suspension setup with separate shock and spring. Here you can see the bump stop on the spring so if it does reach maximum travel it will hit this so it can't travel anymore. So it's a four link multi-link suspension. You've got this lower one down here, this trailing arm here, as well as this upper one here, and then where the spring mounts up your fourth arm and it looks to be cast aluminum so cool to see that they're using some lightweight materials for the unsprung mass. Fairly long drive shaft you can see coming out from the center and then underneath that you can see the anti-roll bar. The anti-roll bar links up just in front of where the control arm with the spring connects. So let's have a look at the interior. Keyless entry and push button start. So to unlock the vehicle you simply open the door as you normally would. If you want to lock it, simply press the black button on the outside. So sitting in the interior, soft leather seats, very comfortable uh, and they've got good support on the sides. So I really like that. Uh, also plenty of leg room. My knees don't interfere with anything. Plenty of space. There's plenty of adjustment in the seat forward and back. Eight-way adjustable front seats with three selective memory settings. So there's numerous clever things in the interior, uh, starting with this blind spot detection system. They've actually located it inside the vehicle, which I think is pretty smart. It's easier to see and it also is going to take the cost out of that mirror should your mirror ever get hit. Speaking of damaged mirrors, you can actually push both of the mirror buttons at the same time and it'll fold them in. Automatic power windows for all four windows. Now the gauge cluster up front is completely digital and one of the cool things about it is it actually shows you the speed limit of the road you're driving on uh, next to your speedometer. Now one of the things I didn't like was that the tack was so small, but fortunately you can actually go in and change what this looks like. So there's an elegance mode, an eco mode, which then you still got your speedometer and then on the right you've got your RPMs and then you've got this little eco guide on the left and then there's also a performance mode and this gives you the big tack uh, and then your speed will be digitally displayed and then you've got your power on the right and your coolant temperature on the left. So it's cool to have options for the display. The steering wheel, leather wrapped, pretty soft. It's actually got a pretty wide diameter on the handle here, um, which is a good feel, especially if you've got kind of bigger hands. I do like the way the steering wheel feels and all very soft leather. Uh, you've got your controls here on the left side of it. This is for your adaptive cruise control, which works very well. Uh, and then your audio controls here as well as Bluetooth. So speaking of the audio, you've got this 7-inch screen which features navigation, uh, media, phone connection, and even internet, strange enough. So you can actually go on there, connect up with your phone, and then actually go online. So I actually went on YouTube on here, and that was pretty cool to do. Now, the whole media center is basically oriented. It's kind of slanted towards the driver, so it's very much uh, for the driver. And, you know, all the buttons, you know, if you've got your hand on this lever, you know, you're kind of within hand reach of everything. Um, it is fairly complex. You know, there's a lot of buttons here going on, which I think could be reduced with a touchscreen or something like that. Uh, kind of a sophisticated system. What I do like with the air conditioning system is that for your head or your feet or chest, you know, it's all on off, on off, on off. And I think that makes so much more sense than the dials that a lot of vehicles have. And then if you've got, of course, your dual climate control, so passenger versus driver. So I guess one complaint would be that there's nowhere really to put a phone. Uh, you can kind of stick it here uh, above the cup holders, but that's for cups. And, you know, there is an area behind this where you can stick it, but there doesn't have a very big edge on it, so it doesn't actually hold it. I feel like if I were driving around, it would slide out. Um, so it would be nice if there was just another little small storage area that you can put a phone or something else like that, just some small items that you happen to be carrying with you and set them down. So let's talk about visibility. Out the front, it's actually really good, and out the sides, it's really good. Out the rear, it is also pretty good. You've got a large rear window. Um, now, when you're looking to your left at the blind spot, basically, it is a little bit... Uh, hard to see back there. That said, you've got your blind spot monitors, and while you are driving in reverse, you do have a rear camera that you can use. Now, something they did that's very simple, but I think adds a really nice touch, is this rear view mirror. It's frameless, as you can see. The whole thing uh, is basically a mirror. You can look at any part of it, and you're, you know, looking at what's behind you, and I think it's just really nice. You know, you don't have that uh, bulky frame around it that looks tacky. It just looks really nice. So sitting in the rear, legroom is okay. I've got the front seat adjusted to where I would have it driving. And as you can see, my knees are pretty close, uh, pretty much touching 
this front seat. That said, I'm about 6'1", 6'2", so, you know, legroom is decent back here. Uh, you've got this center fold down for the rear passengers, and they've got cup holders in there. That's pretty nice. Another thing I really like about this is that you can fold down this center completely and get access to the trunk. So, you know, if you've got four people and you're going to the mountain going skiing or something, you can fit your skis in the center and still have four people fit in the car. This also features optional child booster seats, so you can set the seat back uh, and boost it up a bit, and it's actually got two different levels, so you can press in a button and even have a little bit more, and then simply slam that back down, and you've got a regular seat. Also from the rear, you have a great view out of the sunroof. All right, let's take it for a test drive. Now, one of the first things I noticed about driving this uh, besides really liking this rear view mirror, which is excellent, I really don't know why more cars don't use something like this with the frameless mirror, is how quiet this car is. Driving it is remarkably quiet. It's a very comfortable car. You can tell that pretty much the focus of this was to just be very comfortable. The leather is very soft. The seats are comfortable. The steering wheel is soft and comfortable. Uh, everything about the experience, you know, the ride itself is soft and, you know, there's some roll because of that, but I don't think I would change it. I think that's what this car is going for. I think the people who are going to be driving this are going to want something comfortable rather than something more sporty. So when you do get on the gas and this thing has plenty of power, you know, the car moves quite a bit. It rocks back uh, as the weight shifts to the rear of the vehicle. but. Like I said, I mean, it's everything about it is very comfortable and it's kind of nice to have that much power when you want it. It's got the three liter turbocharged engine. It's a twin scroll turbo and you get plenty of boost really early on. So, you know, you step on it and at about 2000 RPM and beyond, you know, you're, you're put back in your seat. It's got a good amount of power. The accelerator pedal itself is a little interesting. So when you press it down, it comes to a stop and then there's almost a little button or something at the end there. And then when you press that, it seems to downshift and really kick in, you know, that you're only going for power. And it moves. Now, like I said, you know, you're coming through these corners, it's gonna roll quite a bit. It's an SUV, it's not a car, it's not a sports car. So, you know, what it's really doing is you've got plenty of power for merging or any situation where you need it and you've got a nice comfortable ride for everything else. One thing I didn't mention actually when I was doing the interior review is the audio system. It's got a Harman Kardon audio system. It's actually very good, very rich, deep bass, uh, and I really like the audio system in this car. Now, as far as the brake pedal feel, the travel for it is pretty short. There's not much travel in the brake pedal itself. Uh, and it's pretty firm when you are on it. That said, it's not a bad feel, you know. It's not like it's very punchy. It's just there's not much travel, so it is fairly sensitive. Now, this is a six-speed automatic transmission, and as is the case with many cars nowadays, it does have paddle shifters, and they actually turn with the wheel, which is nice. Um, but as is the case with automatics, with, you know, paddle shifters, there is a delay in it. It's actually not bad, though. It's actually fairly good for it being an automatic gearbox. Now this car also features uh, some lane detection so if you start going outside of your lane it'll give you a little audible warning. So here we can test out that lane detection and you can hear that where it's telling me to get back in the lane. Now this also has the adaptive cruise control, which is a feature that I absolutely love. If you ever get the chance to test out a vehicle with it, I would recommend doing so, especially if it's a vehicle you're looking into purchasing and it has it as an option, definitely test it out. You know, the great thing about the system is you get on the highway and you don't really have to worry about matching anyone's speeds. The person in front of you slams on the brakes, fine, the car will do it for you. They start accelerating again, the car will accelerate for you. It's really nice to take out some of the responsibility of you uh, while you're out on the highway. You know, you still got to pay attention and everything thing but you know you're, you're a little bit more relaxed you don't have to worry about matching speeds and it's just a more comfortable situation where you just let the car do the work and you just kind of steer and get to wherever you're going you know hold a conversation with whoever is in the car with you so driving on the highway I'm doing 65 uh, the thing I actually hear the most I believe is wind noise not actually the tires so it is a pretty quiet ride 
Now, I really like uh, the speedometer in these cases. It gives you several things that it indicates on it. It shows you uh, your cruise control, what speed you've got it set to. It shows you what the speed limit is. Uh, and then, of course, it shows you what speed you're going. So it's a, it's a pretty nice system that they've got set up for the display. So let's talk about the vehicle overall. Uh, I'm going to start with the things that I don't like so much. I think the center console area where we've got all these buttons and numbers, I think it's a little overly complicated and it looks a bit dated with all these push buttons rather than uh, touch buttons. Also, I wish there was some storage space right up front here where I could just put a phone or something like that, something small, small items. There's really nothing within reach that's real simple besides this cup holder. Uh, and the cup holder, of course, is for cups. Now, the things that I do like about it, I really like the rear view mirror, I like the sound system, the engine has plenty of power, uh, and overall it's just a really quiet, uh, really comfortable ride. The seats are really comfortable and they've got nice side bolsters in them. Everything about this car is just very comfortable and I really like that about it. Fuel economy was okay, 26 in an SUV, but considering that it's all wheel drive and has 300 horsepower, that really wasn't too bad. So overall, this is actually a really nice car and I've really enjoyed driving it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.